Good day, everyone, and welcome to Social Selling Wednesday. This is a blab that we have every week at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific, whatever that is in your corner of the world. Uh, we talk about uh, social selling issues as well as LinkedIn, Twitter, and anything else that comes up during uh, our conversation, which ends up being quite a bit of stuff usually, actually. <laughs> um, my name is Bob Woods. I'm a LinkedIn and social selling coach, trainer, speaker, consultant, author, writer, all the other things that people like us normally claim. Uh, I'm also a social business strategist with People Links, which activates social selling with individualized guidance for sales reps, with the result being quality leads, faster sales cycle, and a higher closer rate, all of which is measurable through a CRM solution. I'm also a coach and trainer at Social Sales GPS, a soon to launch platform for everyone else that everyone else out there who wants to learn how to do social sales we provide coaching and training in that regard ted so when do you sleep when do i sleep <laughs> that's a good question that's a, especially lately that's been a very good question yeah very, yeah oh i'm ted Pedromo. i'm author of ultimate guide to linkedin for business ultimate guide to twitter for business i do social media strategy online advertising marketing funnels, and also I'm a coach at Social Sales GPS. Okay, and missing in action this week is Michael DeGroote of Staying Alive UK. Uh, his company allows you to share your story with the world through whiteboard animation and video, which is a very, very cool process. In fact, if you go to uh, socialsalesgps.com, you can see an example of his whiteboard animation right there because we use his product. And of course, he's also a social selling LinkedIn coach and trainer and is on board with us at Social Sales GPS as well. So, um, if you want to join in on the conversation, we have the chat room going. We monitor that all the time. If you want to put in a comment or, uh, or you know, uh, toss out a question or whatever, because Michael's not here, we actually have two seats available for you to join in, uh, either via video and audio, or if you just want to pipe up via audio, you can do that as well. You don't have to show your face. So with that in mind, we generally split up the show into two um, into two segments. First of all, uh, first one is any changes that we've noticed in LinkedIn or Twitter or whatever, and it's usually LinkedIn. So um, we will do that. And then uh, the second segment is the just one thing, as we call it. So that's when we draw upon our training, or if we've noticed a certain topic that we want to bring up, we will discuss that as well. So with that in mind... <laughs> It's been a bad allergy morning, so I'm probably going to be coughing quite a bit. So, um, Ted, do you know? Uh, have you noticed any changes this week? Um, I haven't been. Bryn, who's joining the call right now, uh, she said she noticed some changes in the inbox yesterday. Okay, but I haven't seen it on my account yet. Some subtle changes. Okay, that's interesting. So, um, yeah, so so one of the things about LinkedIn is that when they do make changes, they don't do it all at once. It's kind of a gradual rollout, and uh, it depends. I'm going to let Bryn in here really quick. Hey, guys. Bryn, hey, how hey. you doing? I'm so excited. Look, I got um, Bluetooth headset. Wow. Ooh, I feel like really like I can move around. <laughs> yeah. You're not nice. tethered. You are untethered and out of control. Like I totally overinvested in these, but that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> freedom that's is okay. worth the price. Oh, right. There's no price to freedom. There is <laughs> no, no, right. You've also um, got kind of fluffy DNC hair too, it looks like. I have fluffy yes. DNC yeah. from my DNC party last night, you mean? Oh, that's what it was. Oh, okay. I didn't even know you went to a DNC party last night. I went to a DNC party last night with that. The person that hosted the party is friends <laughs> with Bill Clinton. Gotta like that. They went, to, they went to college together and he was one of his legal advisors back in the day. Oh, wow. That's cool. That is cool. So so he, I'm actually friends with his daughter. Mm -hmm. His His granddaughter and my boys went to kindergarten together. Anyway. Oh, that's great. Wow, anyway. we know a celebrity, yeah. an almost anyway. celebrity. Yeah, and it was all over, like that party was all over the news. 
And every picture where I was sitting, apparently I was at the food table because I did not make one picture. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. And 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 for those of you who don't know, Bryn is a social selling and LinkedIn coach and trainer as well. And she's actually based in Philadelphia. So she is at ground zero for all of the activities happening. That is there true. Oh, like literally, basically. literally pro protesters, Bernie protesters outside the door of our building. You wow. gotta we're three, blocks, we're three blocks from City Hall. Normally, I would say you got to like that. I'm not so sure if you got to like that, though. So um. they're actually very nice. <laughs> That's they good. have not been. Yeah, they're very, they're very respectful. Mm -hmm. They're good protesters. Good. good protesters. That's good to hear. They're, yeah, they, they're not coming with angry, especially. Yeah, so it's fine. So it's good. But they, it is funny to ride like the train in the morning with like people with posters like the whole. So it's crazy. Anyway. So I only have 10 minutes, so I want to just share with you the changes um, yes. that Ted sort of mentioned. Yeah, let's do that. Which I'm really, 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 really excited about, like beyond excited for lots of reasons. So I'm assuming this will roll out to everybody, but right now, when you get, to, for me, when I get to my inbox, the first thing I see are all of the birthdays, new jobs, like if there's a big blue kind of background that has all of instead all of those reminders about birthdays right in my inbox the in the streaming the next thing is if and i tested this if you sent a personalized note when you connected with someone which is another reason to do this every single time mm -hmm. if you send a personalized note when you connect with someone that personalized note and Joe is a new connection shows up in the inbox hmm. in that stream. Wow, which that's is amazing. Great. That's one of the things we had asked for. If you yep. remember, Bob, that yep. was like one of the things when we talked with the LinkedIn product team, we had asked for that and mm -hmm. it's done and it's beautiful. That's excellent. But here, here is my social selling strategy around this. And this will be my blog on Sunday. Um, because I'm, I'm halfway through it now, which is great. The biggest, I would say, challenge for many people is keeping up with their new connections and sending those welcome messages. Yep. Mm -hmm. Right? Now it's easy. So there are a few ways I have a lot of our clients create a LinkedIn accepted folder inside of Gmail. And they have a Gmail account or Outlook or wherever that is with a rule that all of invitations at linkedin.com go into, mm -hmm. and then they have to go into that every single day to reply. They can go, although this gets messy, to their connections under new connections, but that actually has both what you've accepted and who's accepted yours. And when I accept someone's connection, I send them a note immediately. So now I have to go, oh, I already sent them a note. Oh, I already sent them a note. Like I, so I don't like that. Mm -hmm. um, and now, actually, now the key is, really, you have to, not you guys, because you always do, but everyone that watches this, you absolutely have to personalize, customize your, your invitations to connect, even now if you're sitting next to them. Right. So it used to be, and I would, if I'm sitting next to someone, I would say, let's connect. Typically I would customize this, but we're in a conversation right now. I'm just going to send it. You can't do that anymore because it will not appear in that list. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. That's really interesting. Yeah. But it's really good. It's yeah, it's really, really good. Really yeah, good. it's good. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. And and like you say, I mean, we we all we all preach harp on beat people over the head about customized messages. This is um yeah. this is this is definitely a, a fantastic reason if you haven't done it before to do it now, basically. Yeah. Yeah. And and so now just have your welcome messages ready, ready to go. Right. Yeah. So I hate I hate to pop off, but I have a webinar at noon that I'm not ready for. So surprise. <laughs> to go. All right. It will be fabulous anyway. I'm sure it will be. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure. So it will be. we have a hundred people coming. It better be. Okay. It will <laughs> anyway, be. It will be. Um, so guys, I just wanted to share that today. Uh, thanks for having me, and we'll talk soon. Sounds thanks. good. Bye. I'm not seeing that in my inbox yet. So I'm not either, but that will be good when that happens. That'll be very good when that happens. So um, I'm I reading, noticed. 
I've got yeah. this message. I just have okay. to read it. Sure. I yeah. Said, go ahead. <laughs> I did. I'm not trying to hit you with a hard sell, but <laughs> here's the hard sell. Uh, <laughs> what not to do. Yeah, exactly. What not to do. We could, we could fill many blabs on just with uh, the what not to do thing. So um, my change, actually, I wouldn't call it a change, but it's something that some people may have noticed last week because I certainly noticed because I got several of these um, notifications last week. Yet when I went in today to try to, um, because I had actually wanted to show it in, in one of our empty screens, what it looked like, they're all gone now. So maybe this was kind of a bug that, that got out and LinkedIn took it away. So this is more of a, here's what I think happened if you saw this last week. So Last week at my notifications feed, I saw several times kind of a, a strange message, message directly from LinkedIn that uh, basically, and I don't remember the exact wording, but it basically said, you have, you have asked someone's name to connect. Um, meantime, you are now following this person's name, basically. And, and the thing is, the couple of people that I recognized, I knew that I had been connected to already. And I, I was just like, what is this all about? So then when I went to their profile, it turns out that I actually wasn't connected to them anymore. I was either a second or third degree um, uh, mm -hmm. connection of, of theirs now. And, and, and that, and the, the first time it happened, I was just like, you know, maybe I was wrong and maybe I thought I was following this person, but I actually wasn't. But then it happened a couple more times. And, and at that point I'm like, this is weird. What is, is happening here? So I started thinking about it and I thought, Think, and I don't have any confirmation of this, so this is just a guess of mine. But I think that it all rolls back to the uh, culling, as I call it, that LinkedIn is now doing of the people who have more than 30,000 connections. So mm -hmm. last week we were talking about um, how LinkedIn is starting to enforce its 30,000 connection limit. And we had an entire conversation about why that's bad and everything else. So so if you wanna see that, just, just go ahead and rewatch last week's show. But I think what was happening is that whatever they have going on internally code wise, um, because the people who got invited or I mean, so let's say you're one of these people who had more than 30,000 connections uh, from the 30,000 first connection that that person made on up. All of those people were backed down to followers. Hmm. So what I'm thinking happened, and this is just because they didn't, uh, my guess is they didn't do adequate testing on, on LinkedIn's end was that, um, was that when they demoted all these people from connections to followers, this message just got kind of sent out automatically to those people who got um, called out or or who got cut out of these people who had the 30,000 plus connections and fell in that 30,000 um, you know, plus thing, basically. Right. Yeah. So I was getting several messages about that. It, that is my guess about what happened. So if you got one of those messages last week, um, I, I believe that that is the reason why it happened is because for these particular connections, you were you were connected with this person after they got their 30K um, um, connections. And for whatever reason, they just didn't think it through and. And I bet that other people were, were were getting these these notices too, and you know they're all like, "What's what's going on here?" Especially because last week, um, I've been kind of lax about inviting people lately, so um, so I knew that I hadn't you know really invited a lot of people. And then when I went in to check my outstanding invites, none of these people were in my outgoing invite. Um, uh, category two. So at first, I honestly thought I was hacked. So I went through and I changed a bunch of passwords and everything else, you know, and did all the things that um, that you do when you think you're hacked. And then I got all that done. And then a day later, I got two more of these messages. And that's when, yeah, yeah. So I went all that stuff, you know, I wouldn't say for for nothing because it had been a long time since I had changed my password and I should have done it anyhow. So so that part wasn't a huge deal, but um, but yeah. So it turns out that I wasn't hacked, obviously, and I'm 
I believe that that's the reason why these messages were going out last week. Now, that being said, I haven't gotten any since then. And and the messages that I had from last week are no longer in my feed. So I think that someone finally said something to LinkedIn and they did whatever yeah. techie ma magic that they do to get rid of it. So if you saw one of those messages, I'm pretty sure that that's why that happened, which you is know, just weird. I'm so frustrated with this inbox. I get the way everything's lumped together. All your sent messages are on in there. I know I, I get 10 to 20 invitations a day. Mm -hmm. And my assistant goes in every day and sends them a welcome message, customizes one for them. Yep. So most of the messages I see are things that I've sent. So uh -huh. I scroll and scroll and scroll. And then it, last week I hit a point I couldn't scroll further down to see more messages. You know, I noticed, you know, it's interesting you bring that up. I noticed that last, either last week or the week before, but definitely in the past couple of weeks, you just, you get stopped. Yeah. So there's no way to see messages. I have like 400 unread messages and I can't get to them to read them. Uh, Even if I sort by connections or in mail, mm -hmm. I still can't get past all the messages because I'm sending, you know, 10 to 20 welcome messages a day. Right. So I'm, <laughs> it's like, uh, oh, come on. Uh, We're trying to interact here. Yeah, exactly. We're trying to interact, We're trying to build business. We're trying to do the things that you want us to do. It's part of your business model, people. Oh, well, maybe I'll try it through Sales Navigator. Start sending the welcome messages through Sales Navigator. Yeah. I wonder if that would help. First shot. That's a good question. That's a good question. Let us know what happens with that. I will. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, there was something else that we were talking about last week that um, one of us had to do updates on. I'm trying to remember. We all had to do items after last week. Or, or was it the week? No, no, it had to be last week. Um, oh, I did sign up for BB. Remember we had talked oh, about yeah. that? Right. Yeah. So so BB is, um, is an interesting platform. It's more popular over in Europe right now than it is here in the U.S., although it does seem to be catching on more here in, in the U.S. And they're, um, I don't know if BB itself is trying to market itself like this, but there are people out there who are who are kind of self-marketing for BB like this as kind of an alternative to or maybe even a replacement for LinkedIn um, because of how it works. It's it's actually not much different from LinkedIn, just mm -hmm. without a, a lot of the functionality that that LinkedIn has. Obviously, they they have more of a following type of um, a, a platform and they have what are called hives, which is basically uh, different interest areas. So it's kind of like LinkedIn groups. Um, but, um, but they're more broadly based. So, hmm. so you don't have these, th these micro hyper targeted groups that LinkedIn tends, tends to have sometimes they're more grouped around subjects more than anything else. So you can, um, you know, you can publish outside content. They have a separate publishing platform in there too, that you can automatically push out to these hives as well. And, and, and you can make connections and, um, and, and like I said, and, and participate in these uh, in these subject based hives, basically. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it's it's definitely it's nowhere near there, I would say, in terms of, you know, trying to trying to take on LinkedIn directly. And and there's obviously, you know, not the sales navigator component. There's not all of the uh, recruiting components uh, components that LinkedIn has, obviously. But it's um, it's not bad. It's not bad. It's just going to be a question of whether or not it takes off here in the U.S., which um, I mean, right now, all all of the, um, you know, names, quote unquote, in social selling are already on it. So um, and, and and there's other experts who have, you know, 95 other social sell or, or, you know, social media channels who are on there as well. So it's definitely taking off in terms of those types of people. I just don't know. And, and and I can't tell just because I haven't had a lot of time to work on it yet, so I haven't had the time to link or to, I forget what they call it in in their parlance, but it's all B, you know, as in bzz, you know the uh, B oriented. So there's hives and there's, um, you know, and there's and there's certain other terms that they use there. They're obviously trying to distinguish themselves from LinkedIn, which they should be doing. 
But, um, you know, it's definitely one of those things where it's like, you know, LinkedIn in, in its infancy, you couldn't do a lot either just because the features weren't there. And I was and, and I was on LinkedIn in uh, in in late 2003. So I definitely remember what it used to be like. And um, BB is like at that point right now. It's just it's uh, it, it grew faster um, in Europe than it is here. But it may be catching on a little bit. I don't know. Uh, yeah, and there's the link for it there. It's uh, us.bb, which is spelled, for those of you just listening, B-E-B-E-E. -E -E. So it's B-E-B-E-E.com. -E and I'm assuming it's pronounced BB. So um, my hesitation is, gosh, I don't have time to take on another social network. Yeah, I hear you, and that's okay. and that's the main reason why I haven't been on it a lot be, uh, because of that, basically. But they are marketing themselves as as an affinity type of network, uh, mainly for business people. So we'll see what happens. I don't know. Uh, um, have you tried that's that all I've got. opportunity? Is a site sorry? opportunity site? I can't. Is it opportunity dot com? You know, yeah, opportunity. I I get invites from there a lot. I get turned off about opportunity because because they want you to upload all of your contacts. Which I mean, you know, I I see what happens on the user end of that, which is you get bombarded with opportunity emails all the time. Right. You know that so and so is joined, and you know I get I get a couple of those a week from from different people. So I mean. Their marketing to me is 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 a little it's a little slimy, a little stalkery, just in my opinion. So I just I just don't bother. I don't know if you've actually been on opportunity or not, Ted. Well, but, I have but, the same feeling. I just they're not opportunities for me and my business. It's opportunities for them to pitch to me. <laughs> That's yeah. It's a pitching platform. It seems like it. I don't get anything people want to connect with me and learn more about what I do. It's all about. Hey, I can do this for you, or we can do that. We can generate a thousand leads for you, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Which I get enough on LinkedIn. Which I mean, you know, as I will connect with someone, and you would assume that they might read your profile a little bit, but then when you connect, you know, you kind of just take that chance and roll your eyes and go, "Oh God, what's going to happen here?" And then you click connect, and then the next thing you get is is a pitch for something that is either in direct competition to you or you just look at your, your your profile and what they pitched you and it's like obviously this person didn't read my 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 profile if they did they would know that there's no way in heck that i would be interested in this basically well yeah i get that all the time too would you like me to optimize your linkedin profile right yeah exactly yeah it's like um <laughs> I could probably do yours and do a better job of it, but I won't go there. So, uh, yeah, it's just, it's just, uh, people, people are amazing sometimes. And I don't mean that in a good sense <laughs> I had, for, for I, this one. I connected with a web developer once and she called me like a minute later and she's trying to sell me wow. LinkedIn consulting services. I said, I thought you did web development. She goes, uh -huh. oh, we do that, but we also do LinkedIn consulting. I said, well, did you read my profile? Mm -hmm. said, oh yeah, we read your profile. You look, it's great. We'd love to help you with your LinkedIn. <laughs> I'm like, you clearly didn't read my profile. So then she goes, well, hold on a second. And she put her boss on the phone. Oh and he no. She starts trying to pitch me LinkedIn consulting services. <laughs> so I said, yeah. look at my profile. That's what I do for a living. He goes, oh, yeah. do you have any extra business you could refer to us? <laughs> And then two weeks oh. later, he called back with a follow-up call to see if I still had referrals for him. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. Wow. Like, wow. Okay. Yeah. So in my mind at this point, I get this image of like, if if you ever saw the movie Boiler Room or, you know, one of those stock market oriented types of movies where there's people just pitching, pitching, pitching all the time. I mean, I get that type of vibe from that company, which of course turns me off entirely and would turn anyone who is like us off entirely, especially when you could probably just hire them and, you know, 
teach them a thing or two and what they're doing, especially because they're using, you know, they're using LinkedIn in such an awful way. They need selling one-on-one training. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Oh boy. Yeah. Yeah. Selling one Oh selling in 2016, one Oh one, which is right. much different than selling in, I, you know, maybe 1997 or whatever. Pick up you the know. phone book and start dialing for dollars. <laughs> dialing for dollars. Yep. Here's, <laughs> Here's your lead, son. Yep. Plunk. Go after them. Close the 20 book. deals today. <laughs> it's the phone book. Yeah. Make 100 calls and then make another 100 calls. Yeah. It's a numbers game. It's all a numbers game, which yeah. it still is. But I mean, but in that, you know, old antiquated um, There's short style. There's to basically. that. <laughs> yes, there are. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so now that we've bashed on traditional selling uh, completely and totally, I think um, we uh, let's go to the uh, just one thing segment here. So, uh, what would you like to talk about this week, Ted? So, Twitter has been on my mind since <laughs> they released their earnings. Their earnings are oh, down. Yeah, their user yeah. growth has stalled. Oh yeah, but you know, oh, it's still a powerful platform. Yes, it is. But then what, you know, how can they stay in business if they're not making money? Yeah. It's a powerful platform. It's not a great business model. Yeah. And they yeah. keep saying they're trying to attract more companies to do advertising on there, but it's so expensive to advertise. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, for a corporate. I mean, one time they called me when I was working for a software company and mm -hmm. they said, would you like to do a promoted post? I'm like, oh, that sounds interesting. Yeah, you get a specific hashtag and you promote mm -hmm. it. I said, okay, how long do I, is it stay? It's for 24 hours. You'll own mm -hmm. that hashtag. Like, well, that sounds pretty good. Yeah. $25,000. What? Which, you know, if you're a huge brand. If you're a huge brand, yeah, that's one thing. You generate millions of dollars, but we weren't yeah. a huge brand. We're selling high-end <laughs> content management software, so. Oh. And uh, I mean, was it was it a popular hashtag to start off with or was it? Um... Well, you get to pick which one you want. So if there's some okay. big event going on okay. or if you want to do a trending topic that was okay. related to your product. Right. That actually turned into a bidding thing. So you could actually end up paying $50,000 for it for the day or more. Wow. Which could be huge. You could generate could... thousands of website visits. Right. For the right company. It could be really big as long as A, you have the money, B, you're big enough, and C, you know, you have the right kind of website content to um, to uh, support what you're doing there because otherwise you would use leads and that's all marketing 101 type stuff. But um, yeah, like if you're Nike and you're selling basketball, Michael Jordan shoes or something. Yeah. And that it's is huge. NBA finals, you tag get that. That's huge. Yep. They can and it's a bargain too at that price. Right. So they got to yeah. find some middle ground there. They have the self-serve platform, but that gets pretty expensive too. Okay. So now yeah, okay. you just have to come up with some way to make some money. And nobody wants yeah. to. <laughs> yeah. And, and they keep taking hits all the time in media, you know, about, um, you know, alleged, you know, censorship and, you know, cut, you know, censoring the wrong groups and, you know, not censoring other groups. And, you know, I don't want to get into politics or, or, or anything like that, but, you know, no matter what group or what side you're talking about, I mean, that's just not good press and good news for the company in general, I don't right. think. And Instagram and Snapchat are just exploding, they said. So. That's good. Yeah. So why yeah, is so, Instagram different than Twitter? You get to write longer posts. Yep. Yeah. Plus, yeah, as long as you can figure out. Facebook, because they keep in saying, oh, your Facebook friend Joe is on on Instagram. Right. Now. Yeah. Yeah, I have noticed that. I, I have noticed that. So, and Snapchat, man, I just, um, I just... There are courses, and I keep saying one day I'm going to take them, but I but I haven't seen it, but but I haven't had a chance to yet. But there are evidently ways to do B two B on Snapchat, and just um, it's 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 funny you mentioned that for for like about the past week and a half or so, I've been Snapchatting back and forth with my 16 year old niece, and um, 
you know, 16 year old niece, you can imagine, you know, all of the inane stuff that goes back and forth between us. And, but every single time I do it, I'm just like, I just, I don't get it. I, A, I don't get Snapchat. I still don't get Snapchat. Maybe it's because of my age. And two, I don't get how it's a B2B type of uh, type of promotion platform. I just, I don't get it. I do not get it. They create little stories. It's pretty good how the brands are using it. Like Food okay. Network. Food Network has a lot of different recipes or you just slide through little stories. Okay. So I see the power in that, but yeah, I don't get it either. For me to create content, to send it out there and yeah. Yeah. I mean, how do you attract followers unless you just get followers from the more traditional methods or whatever? It's I don't know. Yeah, it's just consistency and getting your name out there. Joel Calm about six months ago said, I'm going to check out this Snapchat. Everybody's raving about it. Mm -hmm. And he's got like hundreds of thousands of followers now just because he films himself almost all day long just doing inane things. Like, you know, I'm going for a walk, walking with Joel. <laughs> You know, <laughs> and he does like two or three live broadcasts a day and he ties it in with his Facebook live. Now there's actually products. You can okay. Buy. That I can see, you know, tying in among, among certain, um, among certain social platforms that, that I could potentially see, Yeah, uh, you know, it's kind of like a funneling thing, kind of, kind of like my, um, Twitter to, to, to LinkedIn funneling strategy or channel strategy or whatever I called it. But, um, but, uh, yeah, that, that type of thing I can, I, I can definitely see a little more. I just need to delve into it a little bit more and, and, and stop, um, Snapchatting my, my niece with all of the, uh, you know, skins you can put on your face and, you know, just, uh, you know, like those types of face messages, things like that. I don't yeah. get it. I just don't get Yeah. It. Just look at, you can see some brands. You can follow different brands. Okay. And see what they're doing. It's pretty powerful yeah. in that way. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. You've got to keep creating content and the whole the other content creation. Yeah. <laughs> that's 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 the. I, I mean, just like with anything. I mean, even I mean, even in social selling, it's a, a lot of it is is about um, you know creating content. At least in social selling, you can you can use other people's content and add value to it and start co conversations that way. I think that's maybe one of the things that I'm kind of missing about the Snapchat thing, and that's just because I haven't experienced it in 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 that regard yet. Yeah. So it's just my ignorance more than anything else. But um, one of these days. Well, it well, seems it like the great. landscape is shifting because yeah, it is. is like stalled. I don't know. LinkedIn, if still LinkedIn growing is absolutely fast. stalled. Yep. Yahoo yeah, is I going mean, away. Yeah, yeah. Yahoo. You know, Snapchat's coming on. Instagram's coming on. Facebook's dominating. Yeah, Facebook is still dominating. Google um, Plus is a who knows what happened to that. <laughs> Nothing ever really got started with that. In fact, I just um, in my um, in my buffer posts and promotions, I just recently removed um, I removed Google Plus. I'm actually not going to do anything with my Facebook just personal page anymore. I'm just I'm just pushing stuff out, out now via um, via LinkedIn and and uh, and Twitter, and that's it anymore. Yeah. At least in terms of what you can do with a with a buffer. Buffer does have a um, Pinterest and um, Instagram channel that you could push out to. Maybe I'll look at those sometime. But um, but yeah, Facebook um, just isn't that. I mean, who knows about Facebook? Which actually gets in to my um, to my thing that I want to talk about, and that's um, and that's being uh, being creepy in social selling uh so um and it's actually all based on on, on this it's something that i downloaded from from hubspot which hubspot had just fantastic content i mean they're just they're they're fantastic just great so they recently did this um did this report is social selling creepy da, da, da. <laughs> uh, buyers and consumers define the normal slash stalker divides so um i'm, I'm going to quickly read their their five major findings overall you know obviously 
I think the the main takeaway that any of us get from this is it's as creepy as the person who is sending the stuff makes it basically. That's what it comes down to. So, um, you know, my my overall rule when it comes to anything in social selling is if you don't like it being done to you, don't do it to other people. And that includes the, um, you know, the whole uh, stalkery, creepy type of thing. So their first their first kind of takeaway or finding is buyers and consumers are le less likely to perceive social selling tactics as creepy if they share connections with the salesperson. That one's pretty good, pretty obvious, and I definitely agree with that. The second one is uh, messages customized to a particular buyer or consumer are usually perceived as less creepy than non-customized messages. messages. We always preach customized messages. Um, anyone who does this really well tries to customize as much as possible. So, you know, send customized messages, uh, especially especially in that initial connection request on LinkedIn. Do not use the the uh, generic one that LinkedIn provides. Always connect from the profile from the person you want to connect to their profile so that so that you don't inadvertently send out a um, a, a generic type of connection request. Mm -hmm. Number three, I think, is interesting, and that's why it prompted me to bring it up. Um, Facebook is strictly out of bounds for social selling. That one, I think, is interesting. Uh, and, and the little paragraph below, it says, social selling interactions connected through Facebook were rated as more creepy than any other network. Now, obviously, that doesn't uh, apply to advertising and things like that. That's that's the types of actions that we take in social selling or that we train in in social selling through LinkedIn and Twitter pr primarily. So, I mean, people still view Facebook as, as, as being highly personal. I think that that's what what comes down to. And um, using Facebook is uh, is is a no no. So, and and to everyone else's credit out there, I haven't been. I, I have not been the victim of, if you want to be dramatic, um, social selling efforts on Facebook. So I think that most everybody knows that already, but it's interesting that, that it actually shows up in this report here. Mm -hmm. um, uh, fourth one, in general, light social selling interactions, which is like liking, retweeting, and favoriting, are considered to be less creepy than more in-depth interactions, which is uh, basically commenting and messaging. Uh, everyone likes social support, but not everyone likes social content. It's contact. So, you know, again, if you don't like it being done to you, don't do it to other people. Um, and number five, buyers and consumers stated preferences towards salesperson behavior and their gut reactions to sales practices are sometimes at odds. So they say, um, although respondents at times label a specific social selling practice as creepy, questions that asked about generic sales practices reveal the discrepancy between rational thinking and gut reaction. So that one's just interesting. I'm not really sure what to make of that, but I think that that's just something to uh, to uh, keep in mind. Uh, one of the things that they talk about a little later in the article is that if you do get that kind of reaction from a couple of people, it doesn't mean that you're doing something wrong necessarily. You just got to just keep doing it. And, you know, not every single person out there is going to react positively to any type of, of uh, to every type of, of social selling type of activity. So, um, right. <clears throat> so uh, the one thing that I taught in relation to this is um, is 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 basically um, using that um, the light social selling interactions point and actually building on that a, a little bit. And this is something that I teach at People Link. So uh, if you want to develop deeper uh, relationships, start off light you know, just with uh, liking, retweeting and sharing and favoriting or, or retweeting or whatever, then as the relationship builds, you can start getting more into commenting and um, reacting beyond a like, basically. And then eventually, uh, you know, hopefully the relationship will will get to the point to where you can start messaging at that point. So, you know, it's just like a sales funnel, basically. Start yeah. off right. And you go um, and, and and you start getting more advanced as the as the relationship builds. But the relationship has to build. Otherwise, it's going to look creepy. Yeah, I th teach people 
it's like you meet somebody in person at a conference or a networking event. You start mm -hmm. talking about, hey, what you, you know, what company to work for. Talk about the weather. Talk about maybe some sports. Yep. And then it gets yeah. a little deeper. You don't start getting into politics and religion. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> God, don't ever do that. Please don't yeah. ever do that. Just keep it light. And you yep. think, oh, yeah, this person's interested in cooking, too, or whatever. Right. And just build those relationships over time. Yeah. People just don't want to do slow and steady anymore, though. That's what's frustrating. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's you know, zero to 60 in 3.5 seconds. And and it just, it doesn't work. It, it doesn't work. I mean, it, it, it may work with 5% of the population, maybe. And that's only because that 5% consists of people who do it themselves, basically. And that would be the only reason why. But there's, but there's so few people who are, who are out there like that, that it just doesn't, um, it's 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 just not worth it to to try to go from zero to sixty in three point five seconds with your relationship. What about if you're a millennial selling to a millennial? I wonder if that would work. Um, I'll have to talk to some of my son's friends because they're two years out of college. They've been in sales now for two years. Oh, I'd love to talk to them because I've known them since they were five years old. But that would be interesting. That would be a great interview. So, <laughs> that actually reminds me of, of, of a story. Uh, I was at some type of presentation for, for millennials and just sales in, in general. And um, it was a lot of nothing, nothing talk basically just because there haven't really been, I don't know if there's been a lot of studies done in, in general about this, but it doesn't seem to me like there has been. So one of the things that the author gave away was this like little mini book about selling to millennials. But it was like, it was literally one of those um, little books that had like maybe 50 or 60 pages in it. And, and that's it. And my main takeaway from that is, okay, so you're, so you're telling me that you really don't know, what it's like to sell to millennials because if you did the book would have been a heck of a lot bigger than this and you wouldn't be giving it away at a conference basically did you ever see that book what men know about women it's like <sighs> it's at least like four inches thick uh-huh it's all blank pages <laughs> same yeah and yep. they, they sold millions of copies <laughs> And then they came out of the second edition and sold millions of copies. Oh God. <laughs> I wish I would have that idea. Oh, that would have been so easy to make so much money. Oh, that's funny. That's funny. Okay. So very good. So, um, it's, it's 1143. I think we're going to wrap things up. Uh, Thanks, thanks for joining us, whether you've uh, been with us here live or if you're listening or watching this on a replay. Again, we're here every Wednesday at 11 a.m. 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific. And uh, for Ted and for the Missing in Action, Michael, I'm Bob Woods. And have a great week, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Bye.